In the early 1980s, as awareness of sexual harassment in the workplace increased, the U.S. government began addressing the problem with various publications and training films. Up next on Real America, Unwelcome Affection. Created by Walter Reed Army Medical Center in Washington, D.C., the training video shows five dramatized examples of inappropriate workplace behavior with suggested questions for group discussion appearing on the screen after each segment. This is about 12 minutes. The Human Resources Directorate, Equal Opportunity Division of Walter Reed Army Medical Center presents Unwelcome Affection. And now, here is the Chief of Staff of Walter Reed, Colonel Gerald D. Allgood. Sexual harassment is a matter of deep and personal concern to both the Secretary of the Army and the Army Chief of Staff. While our concern has been expressed on several occasions in the past, it is important to reiterate the Army's policy on this issue. The Army is fully committed to a policy that demands respect for the human dignity of its members. That policy cannot succeed where sexual harassment exists. It is the responsibility of every soldier and every Army leader, civilian and military, to ensure that any instances of sexual harassment are dealt with swiftly and fairly and to promote a climate within the Army that will not tolerate such conduct. Allegations of sexual harassment will be treated at all levels of command with the seriousness they deserve. Each person, male or female, must be treated and evaluated solely on how well tasks are carried out. The scenes you are about to see demonstrate some of the many forms that make up sexual harassment. We ask you to view each situation as if you were actually involved and respond to the questions posed at the end of each scene. Good morning, Sergeant White. Good morning, Sarge. How you doing? Oh, just fine. Look, I really mean to call you in before and give you a welcome to the staff. You've been here uh, about five weeks now, and I haven't had a chance to talk to you. But your sponsor told me that you're doing a terrific job, you're getting along well with other members of the staff, and you're learning your job real well. This, uh, this area, uh, D.C., is a very promising area. A lot of people you know, assigned here and stay quite a while. How do you like being stationed here? I love it. I've been hearing so much about um, D.C. when I was in Germany about um, the nightlife, party and city, a lot of sightseeing, and I just can't wait to get out there to see it all. Okay, that's good. We're glad you're happy with your assignment. One thing that people have problems with when they first arrive here is the in-processing period. They say that everything is so far away they don't know where anything is, and they have a hard time getting processed in. How about you? Do you have all your finance and personnel business taken care of? I'm personnel, but I'm having problems with finance. Uh, finance haven't paid me for two months. I have about six dollars left to last me until they pay me, whenever they pay me, and I'm in a bind right now as far as money. Okay, I'll tell you what I do. I'll call over and talk to the company commander and see if I get him to give uh, finance a call so they can get your pay straightened out right away. Another problem is for um, housing and living conditions. Uh, how about you? Have you found a place to stay? Well, right now I'm staying in the barracks. I'm having a problem there, too, because my roommate, my roommate loves loud music, and I have a problem going to sleep, getting my rest because of that music. What I suggest that you do with the um, to roommate is ask her to turn the stereo down because you're trying to sleep. But if it doesn't work, just give the uh, charge of quarters a call, and they have been instructed to make sure that all stereos are turned down to a reasonable level and especially off at a certain time of night. But I have your records here, uh, Sergeant White, and it indicates that, uh, that you are married and you're living in the barracks. I am married, uh, but my husband, he's not with me right now. He will be joining me in several months from now. Oh, your husband's not here now? No, he's not. Oh, okay, well, that's really unfortunate. You know, I'm sorry to hear that, that here you are, here in this big city all by yourself, and your husband, you know, away, and not having any money, and a roommate 
with all this uh, loud noise. I tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, since you know you haven't been paid in a long time, why don't you let me, you know, give you a little something to sort of, you know, sort of tide you over until uh, you know we can get the company commander to straighten out your pay. Well, I really appreciate that. And uh, it would help out a lot. Like I said, I don't have that much money with me. But as soon as my paycheck is OK, I'll pay you back as soon as oh, I can. Oh, no, no. Don't worry about paying it back. Just say this is just so you know, uh, it's all just looking out for the troops, all right? As a matter of fact, I'll tell you what we'll do. This weekend, why don't I come by and pick you up, and uh, we'll go down and me show you D.C. You say you heard a lot about it. Let me just, you know, be the first one to show you around the city. How about that? I would like that, but I can't. I'm afraid I can't do that because I have to wash clothes, I have to go to the PX, get my uniform together, and most important thing of all, I have to make a phone call to my husband at certain times of the day. Hey, wait just a minute. You know, uh, you are new here on the staff, right? And it's like to remind you that around here on the staff that, uh, see here, I make a lot of decisions. I am the one that fix up evaluation reports. I sign three-day passes and leaves, and just a little word of advice, you know, if you want to get along on the staff, it will be beneficial to you to be a little bit nicer to me. Oh, Captain Curvo, Captain Rex, good morning. good morning. Good morning, sir. We'd just like to thank you for all the work you've done in getting the allocation for this school. And although it's just one allocation, we feel it's really going to be a good career move for one of us. Sure will be. I'll tell you, it was like pulling teeth. I, I made a few calls, and I was able to squeeze just one opening for one applicant uh, from this area. So we're, um, we're just going to have to really kind of bite the bullet. Frustrating thing is both of you are deserving applicants. One of us could go this year, and then if the budget cuts don't cancel the program, one could go next year. Okay, uh, that's true, and I hope it works out. As I said, the economic situation across the board is bad, and we may run into a problem even next year. So uh, I'm going to have to kind of make a tough decision. I'm, I'm going to look at both of your records and see which of you really could probably qualify more than the other for, for the program. And what I'll do is uh, let you know Monday morning. How's that? Okay, sir. Right, thank you. Have a good weekend. Sure. Oh, Captain Curvo, I, I need to see you for a moment, please. Did you want to see me about my application? Yes. And some other things. You know, Debbie, how you doing? Fine, Larry, how are you? Good. Hey, I've been, I've been thinking about you the last, the last couple weeks, and let's... Please, uh, think about what I've been asking you to do the last couple months. Hey, Larry, I, I'd, I'd like, I'd like not to, that again, please. I'd like to spend some time with you. Why not? I've given you a thousand reasons before why not. Can't we just drop it at that? Drop it at that, huh? Debbie, put it this way. If you select me this weekend, I'll select you for the course. It's up to you. Are you having problems with that report? Yes, ma'am. Uh, this new job is really taking some getting used to, but I think I can work it out sooner or later. You can drop that ma'am routine and call me Aurelia. I see what you're doing wrong. Well, I sure hope you can see it because I've been working on this thing for the last two hours and can't make any headway. It's way past quitting time. Let's get some dinner and maybe some s sweet dessert. 
And I'll explain an easier way to get these reports done. You know, I would really like to, but I have a lot of work to do. And I think I'll just finish up and stay here and get these reports done. Well, okay. Since you didn't have time to go to dinner with me, I would like for you to find some time to complete these reports before tomorrow. Good morning, Captain Ricks. How's it going, John? Pretty good. How you doing? Fine, fine. How's the weekend? Fantastic. Oh, great, great. Gene, how you doing this morning? Oh, I'm fine, John. Hmm, that's good, good. Good morning, Debbie. Would you like some sugar for that coffee? Morning, John. Good morning, Debbie. Valerie, good morning. How you doing? Good morning, John. Mmm. Good morning. Every morning he comes in here kissing everyone. Oh, that's just John. You know, it's an office tradition. Well, I don't like that tradition. What are you going to do about it? Someone's been riding the waves. Yeah, look what look like somebody knocked up that army chick too. But the other two look like they're all right. Hey, if you two chicks want to get knocked up, John, I'm glad to help you. That's for sure. That's for sure, now. Don't run away. Don't run away. Big leg devil. Hey, yeah. <laughs> 